Hello and welcome to my world of crochet. My name is Tina and today I'm here with you for a first hand impression review. This is a second impression review of a three series review of the mini amigurumi animal books by Sarah Ambondio. She has made books with animals, one with birds and one with ocean creatures. These books usually contain 25 to 26 small creatures that you can crochet and they are so tiny that you can use them as charms, keyrings and the like. This video is about the mini Amigurumi birds book which was released back in 2022. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to flip the screen around and then we are going to go through this book together with my first hand impression. So here we have the mini Amigurumi birds by Saram Bondio, which is a 25 tiny creatures, tiny flying creatures to crochet. So let's turn this book around and read the back side of it. And it says here, this charming book is full of acute and characterful birds to crochet. Choose from a vibrant peacock, puffin or flamingo, an adorable penguin or a striking emu or swan. Attach your finished birds to purses, key rings, baby buggies or baby mobiles. There are 25 a tiny birds to make and collect and even a little egg to complete the set. All you need is a crochet hook, some yarn and a few basic crochet techniques which are clearly explained to get you started. Which one will fly off your hook first. I like the wordplay here with the fly off your hook, assuming these are flying birds, all of them. Well, obviously the ostrich isn't, but, uh, but let's have an opening and a look here. And already here on the inside, we get this quick preview of these small flappy birds, um, which is in the book. And they are really, really looking cute, I have to say. Um, we are starting here with the introduction of the author, Sarah Ambondio, who is a Danish wish designer that has been interested in creating crochet things since she was young. She's a trained as a design engineer and has worked in the, as an independent designer to uh, produce uh, and develop products for several Danish brands. Um, and she started to crochet when her daughter uh, was young and wanted um, some toys. You want to create some unique toys. And here you can see again, we are starting on the tiny informations here. This is absolutely gorgeous, right? The bird on these, um, these rings, um, toy rings. Um, we can also see the contents. We'll go through materials and tools, pattern notes and crochet techniques. And we have a list of the birds that will be a part of this book. So let's flip around because I know the birds come here in a little bit bigger um, version here. We have a cockatoo, macaw, toucan, hummingbird, peacock, ostrich, emu, flamingo, penguin, rockhopper penguin, puffin, kingfisher, blackbird, robin. We have here the blue tit, seagull, stork, or owl, pigeon, swan, eagle, duck, bat, hen, chicken, and of course the egg as mentioned. All these mini amigurumi birds. Here we go through materials and tools. And here generally she recommends using a four ply or fingering weight cotton yarn. Uh, and a crochet hook of two and a half millimeters. Um, the cotton yarns would be possible to find, such as the Hobby Rainbow or Hobby Friends uh, 8 for cottons. They also have similar flum, Mayflower, etc. There are plenty of cotton brands uh, in this size of four ply cotton. They are usually a 50 gram ball, so that's 1.75 ounces to 160 as 70 meters which is like around 180-ish yards per skein. Um, they also, again, say it's nice to have stitch markers, some darning needles, of course, have some polyester filling for the toys and safety eyes. If you use the materials recommended in the sense of um, these um, 
four plied fingering weight cottons. Then Sarah recommends a five millimeters uh, safety eyes. That said, if they are going to be given away to children younger than three, so you recommend that you crochet on um, the eyes so that you make them crocheted. And a few notes here for the pattern is that the pat the book here is written in UK crochet terms, so UK English crochet term and not US crochet terms. And it's very important to know because UK crochet and US crochet terms are not the same. In the UK, a double crochet is the same as a US single crochet. A half treble crochet in the UK is a half a double crochet in the US. And a treble crochet in the UK is a double crochet in the US. We also get abbreviations for the patterns, which are really, really good to know as well. Um, we do get some crochet techniques as to how you make adjustable rings or magical rings as they're known. Slip stitch, double crochets, etc. And these, of course, it's important again to say, are all the UK terms. Then we proceed by the pattern and here we have the cockatoo as a very first. We get information to how make to make the body, to make the head, to make the beak, to make the crest feathers, the foots and the tails. So that you end up with this very, very cute uh, cockatoo bird. The macaw also have similar informations. They are also quite descriptive as to how to make them. On the next page we have the toucan. All of these patterns are quite simply described as how they are made. And we also get some tips here in between. For example, that it's recommended that you can try and make your birds hanging in these mobiles. Um, for example, using a bamboo ring or similar. Um, so you can use it into like a decoration, for example, for children or just general decoration uh, as such. Um, so, so that's just like, you know, she does come with other tips as well on how to do these. We have here the hummingbird and a nice middle section here of various things. We have, oh, I jumped a page. We have the peacock. I do really adore this peacock. It's gorgeous. And we have the ostrich and they all really like, like, like you don't, there's no second guessing here. We have the emu, the flamingo, and the flamingo here is also shown in different, a few different sizes and different types of yarn. This seems to be more like a chenille type of yarn uh, that it's made in. Um, and it gives you the room to experiment a bit because you can do know if you size up the yarn used, um, of course, you will get a bigger project. And therefore, as long as you just make sure that the needle or not the needle, the crochet hook you use, make nice tight stitches so that the filling won't stick out. The pink one is cute. It reminds me of a series series when I was younger. And we have the rock hopper penguin. And then I'm thinking instantly of happy feet. We have the puffin here. And we also have a few tips. Again, it says here, if you use a larger hook and a larger yarn, you will get a bigger uh, puffin. A very good example is here, the puffin on the right here is 16 centimeters tall, um, used a five and a half millimeter crochet hook, where the left one is about six centimeters tall using a two and a half millimeter crochet hook. So that gives you a really nice comparison on how to do it. The kingfisher bird. And the blackbird, the blackbird or the sunbird is, is a bird that's really known a lot in, in Central Europe. It's like almost in any garden. Um, the robin, absolutely gorgeous. And we have here the blue tit, definitely also a gorgeous bird. We have plenty of these in my garden here um, at home. And we have a nice overview of all the birds again. We now go to the seagull. Who haven't seen seagulls. Uh, if you live close to the ocean, there are plenty of them. The stalk, it said the stalk is bringing babies. So that seems like a great tiny project to, to crochet if you know somebody who's pregnant and is going to deliver anytime soon. We have the owl. Um, a good friend of mine loves owl. I might have to make her one and ship it to her. Pigeon. 
we have the swan. The swan is a Danish national bird, actually, for um, fun info. Then we have the eagle, and I instantly think about the seabold eagle, the American ones. We have the duck, which looks like just to be a mallard, like regular, a regular duck. We have a bat, definitely love small bats. We have the hen. We have a chicken. And then we have the egg. So the in only animal I think in all this is the bat, which is probably not being hatched by an egg, as far as I know. So um, very nice. And uh, we have a few good tips here, for example, that you can turn them into key rings. And here are examples on how they look on the key rings. Um, and uh, it's basically an absolutely wonderful book for you to be able to use up some of your scrap yarns because as you can see they are really tiny projects um so yeah the best opportunity here to to get some of those scraps used i hope you enjoyed this first hand impression of the mini amigurumi birds um if you like to see this content and if you like to talk about yarn crochet and much more then I do encourage you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it already. And of course, the notification bell. So you will get notified whenever I do post new videos. These videos can be anything from first-hand impressions of books to yarn talks, yarn hauls, giveaways, tutorials, and much more. Take care and happy crafting.